What's up guys? Today we're going to be learning how to make a volume slider bar. It's pretty easy stuff, so let's get to it. Uh, all you need are three objects. We have a knob object, it's an active object. We have a bar object, and we have a counter. So go ahead and uh, click on your knob object. And we need to add an alterable value. We're going to call this volume. And we're going to add a string and we're going to call this state. All right, <clears throat> so what we're going to be doing is uh, playing a sound effect on a channel and then changing the volume of that channel based around where this little knob is in relation to the bar. Uh, it's really not that hard. Use some simple math. The formula is a little long, but uh, if you understand the math behind it, it's pretty simple. Okay, so we're going to do a start a frame event. And this is going to be where we put the music in. We're going to add a sample. We're going to play and loop a sample on a specific channel. And uh, I have a song here. Let me see. Uh, there we go. We're going to play this on channel one. And we're going to do zero for a continuous loop. Let's give that a shot, see if that works. Okay. Now we are going to add an always event. We are always going to set the uh, counter to be the value of volume, which we have under our knob item. <clears throat> All right, uh, now we need to be able to click and grab the knob. Here, let's place it real quick. Let's put the knob over here. Okay, we need to be able to grab this knob, so we need two states. We need a grab state and an ungrab state. So to grab it, we're going to go to the mouse, and we're gonna find out if the mouse has clicked on it. So user clicks on an object, and uh, that's the knob. And if the user clicks on it, then we are going to set the alterable string of state to grabbed. Now this can be anything, you just need to name this and we're going to check the state. Alright, so we need to have something for releasing. So that's going to be anytime the mouse uh, is not being held down, that's, you know, it's been released. You can't be holding it if you're not pressing the mouse button. So, uh, repeat while mouse key is pressed, left mouse button. We're going to negate this and uh, that's how you know it's released and we're going to set the state then to something called free. Okay, <clears throat> so while the uh, mouse is being held, while the state is set to grabbed, um, where's that at? Alterable strings. Here we go. Compared to alterable string. Okay, while state is grabbed, we are going to set. We're going to set. Okay, while state equals grabbed, we're going to set the uh, x position of the knob to the x position of the mouse. Okay, let's give this a test and see if it worked. It should have. Okay, see we can't move it up and down. We can grab it, let go. But there's a problem. It uh, can be removed off the sides. So we need to make sure it can't go off the sides, so we're gonna do that now. We're going to find out if the position of the knob, <clears throat> uh, we're gonna compare the X position to a value, and we're gonna find out if the knob is to the right or to the left of the bar. So let's do that right now for the right. We'll say position X coordinate of right edge if it's greater than that, then we are going to set the X position of the knob to the X position of the right edge of the bar. Meaning that it, once we get past it, it just sets it as far as it can go, as far as the, the right edge of the bar is. So let's do the same thing for the left. So we'll say is the position of this uh, lower than the uh, position X coordinate of left edge. And if that's the case, we are going to set the position. Oops, on. We are going to set the position of this object, uh, the x coordinate, to the position of the left side of the bar. So position, and select x coordinate of left edge. All right. So let's see if that worked. It if it did, it should uh, not be able to be pulled off the bar. Perfect. So we need to set the volume. So we're going to do that now. We are going to, under the always event, we are going to set the alterable value of volume. Uh, now this is the tricky part. So what we're going to be doing essentially is getting the, the, 
left is going to be the leftmost is going to be zero. The rightmost is going to be 100, and we are going to get the percent of the bar that we are uh, on it with the knob. How far to the right we are. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to um, get the p x position of the knob, and we're going to subtract that from the x position of the leftmost edge, and that should give us the essentially how far we are on the bar. Um, <clears throat> and we are always setting counter to volume, so we can now we can check this with the counter. So, so as you can see, our bar is 624 pixels long. So that worked. <clears throat> so let's edit this further. Um, now we need to get the percentage. We simply need to divide this by the length of the bar. And the length of the bar we can get again by the uh, we need to get the x coordinate of the right edge and subtract it from the x coordinate of the left edge of the bar. Okay, let's try it now. Because I'm wrong. Let's put some parentheses around here and uh, just make sure everything's being done in the right order. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> you have two sections here. You got one where you're, we're getting how far the, the slider is on the bar. Put a parenthesis around that. On the other one, where we're getting, we're figuring out here, uh, where the we're getting the length of the bar, you put a parenthesis around that as well. Okay? That'll make sure the order of operations are done correctly. Okay. So we have two problems right now. Uh, currently, the, the result of this is getting floored because we're using... Uh, positions. This is something that Click Team Fusion does. This should this should be giving us a float normally. A float is a decimal. It's not. We need the float. So we're going to force a float, and we're going to do that by multiplying this formula by 1.0. And if we do that, that should give us a float. So let's try that now and make sure it works. Perfect. As you see now, we have two numbers between 0 and 1, and they are decimals. Now, the only thing we need to do now is multiply this entire formula by 100 so that the value is between 0 and 100. So, again, we are uh, going to need to put parentheses around the entire thing to make sure that's calculated first, and then multiply it by 100. Let's make sure that worked. Perfection. One last thing to do under the always event, we just need to set uh, our volume of channel one to the value of volume. So always set, uh, where's that? Set channel volume. Channel is one, and the volume is going to be the value of volume. That's how it's done, guys. Not really that hard. So uh, thanks, everybody, for watching this video. Again, I hope this was helpful. As always, put the, uh, in the comments down below any questions you might have, and I will try to get to you, as well as if you have any suggestions for things you'd like to see me do videos on, just please uh, post it in the comments or send me a private message, and I will try to get to it. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching, and have a great one.